everybody. Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV in Coldwater, Michigan today with some updates on the 26RL J-Feather. This is a newer floor plan. Maybe didn't catch it last year. It snuck out there and uh, it's it's very similar to like there's a there's an Imagine 2500RL. There's a Cougar 25RDS. It's sort of Jayco's installment into that kind of floor plan category. Who did it better? Well, you're going to be the judge of that. I'm going to show you what she has to offer, and I'd like you to let me know which one you like better. If you've never seen the others, check the links in the video description after this video, and you can take a look at those. So, Jayco, what do they bring into the table? Well, they got that Jayco warranty, that 2 plus 3 year warranty that pretty much nobody else matches. If you're a fan of Asdell, this is also a double Asdell using floor plan. Asdell layering on the inside and outside of the laminated sidewall. Um, they have a heavy-duty Magnum Truss uh, snow load walk-on roof. Then again, pretty much everybody has a, uh, a snow load walk on roof but Jayco uses plywood instead of OSB that might you make uh, might make you feel a little bit better and that's the thing you're going to find a lot of extra details and little premiums in this like the Goodyear uh, endurance radial tires that you're finding on these now uh, it does have an enclosed heated underbelly uh, the awning uh, is it's good size it doesn't cover the bedroom entry door but I don't know that a lot of people really want that door uh, as a primary access point anyway. Instead, what it does is on a rainy day, the awning is positioned, so you're not gonna get spritzed in the face every time you hop outside. Uh, up on the roof, you'll see roof solar prep, but there are multiple different factory solar options. You also have options for two different interior decors, and this is carpetless, even through the slide, and I love it when they make the slide floor match the main floor. It's got a couple hangups though. I'll let you know one right away. It's a camp queen bed. I think there's room for a true queen in there. And if there are any owners of Jay Feathers out there, they really standardize that front bedroom quite a bit. I'd love it if you chimed in and let me know, can you put a true queen in this? And maybe if that was going to be a deal breaker for you, that's something that we can just make not an issue anymore. And if you appreciate through this video how we show you kind of, you know, the great points of the RV as well as the uh, the points of concern or pointing out how it might compare to something else, hit that subscribe button if you're new with us. And if you're a regular returning member of the RV Nerd Herd, leave me a little comment. Let me know you're out there. Perhaps a little hashtag nerd herd would be appropriate. Now this thing right here, I love the symmetrical look of the back of this. You got the breeze across windows, like maximum airflow windows all over the place right there. I, I'm blanking at the moment because, folks, I see a lot of RVs. I do believe there's a hide-a-bed swaption available for that. But on that note, I have a question. And I don't know if it's even available. I don't know if it would fit. I'm just asking generalities here. Instead of a dinette, what would you say to the option of a second sofa? And then maybe like a floating dinofa table? Is that anything that would be of interest to you whatsoever? Leave me a note. Let me uh, Let me know there. Now up top here, they've improved the air conditioner this year. That's now a standard 15,000 BTU. Last year it was a 14.5 like weird size. I, I, I don't know. And then uh, this is also another interesting thing Jay Feather does. They've got a bunch of little, not unique necessarily, but interesting qualities. XL vent fan up here. That's cool. Plenty of brands use those, but they don't usually put them in the living room like this. The thing is Jay Feather will give you a powered vent fan for every single room of the RV. So you have a separate one for the bathroom. You have a second uh, or a third one rather for the bedroom. Those smaller rooms also get smaller fans. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, number one, first thing I would do, if uh, we were playing Family Feud and you watch me all the time, ding, 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 answer on the board is get rid of that post leg system and get a free floating uh, table system. That's something I would go for personally. Notice though, they uh, a couple years ago, one or two years ago, Jayco got rid of the carpet in their slides essentially across the board. And I like how the slide flooring matches the main flooring. Real quick note, sometimes you might notice a little corner of it kind of peek up a little bit like that. This is what's called a floor flush slide, but it's not truly completely floor flush. Um, carpet in front of the slides used to kind of mask little things like that. And, uh, it, you know, depending on exactly how everything lays, sometimes you have a little flap like that. Usually once the RV warms up, that stuff will rest and become not an issue. Uh, we're looking at the modern farmhouse decor today, although you also have a uh, another one they call vintage, which is a uh, like a, a sandy taupe kind of color, like a, a light grayish, as it were. Well, it's kind of medium. It's, it's extra medium. It's extra. Actually, that's one of my favorite things to do. That's an old Stephen Wright joke that I borrowed. <clears throat> I did some RV R&D on a joke right there. And um, if I'm ever trying to try on a shirt somewhere, 
I can't find my size. I like to grab one. I like to go up to the, uh, the poor soul working there who happened to bump into me. And I go, uh, excuse me, do you have this in an extra medium? And their brains just melt. They had, I don't know, I'll check in the back. And then they just quit and leave. I assume. I don't know. I don't stick around to find out. Um, the uh, kitchen countertop is an all sealed edge pressed membrane. I love that countertop extension. And it needs to flip up and down because the slide would crush it if it were fixed. Now, they don't have outlets on the side wall under that window because the RV's got an inch and a half laminated wall. So they do have the pop-up power tower there. And when that's in the down position, it can also function as a, uh, a wireless charge pad, which is kind of cool. Um, surprisingly, you don't see a lot of other outlets here, but there actually is another set hidden just up under that kitchen cabinet. I'm tall enough, I often forget to look there, so my apologies on that. Cabinetry in this, uh, by the way, is what's called lumber core, where it's all pocket screwed uh, screws into wood. You might notice... They do not have floor heating vents in this. They were able to uh, uh, do completely cabinet ducted heating throughout. But one of the questions you might have is you look at that TV and like, here, let me actually sit down like at the theater seat. And it's not exactly an awesome direct view. It's kind of like shared between the dinette. It's almost pointing more toward the dinette. The good news, well, it also comes with a solution. If you open that thing up, you see it pivots right around and it's not an issue. You also have like a spice rack kind of built in under that, like a shallow little mini pantry. But as we start going through this kitchen, one of the things you notice, all that counter space, they utilize and give us a ton of cabinet area. And you do have a big dedicated pantry, even with some extra little like, uh, you know, pantry slide out drawer so you don't have, like the storage can come to you you don't have to go crawling on your hands and your knees to get to that storage in the back there uh we're looking at a 12 volt fridge today but there is a gas electric two-way option albeit smaller although it does use less power on propane mode when you're boondocking so depending on how you want to camp you might equip one of these totally differently like this is totally built for like midwestern park camping right now a two-way fridge and one of the Overlander optional solar packages, that might be exactly what you want. Um, now, the theater seats in Jayco's, you see those little swivel tables that come included with them. You never see them in other campers. <laughs> because basically, Jayco essentially owns like the patent or exclusivity or whatever on those. So other manufacturers would have to pay them. Also, did you notice that the RV does have uh, blackout roller shades uh, on all those big breeze windows back there? Now, if I slink my way backwards here a little bit we sink our way into the bathroom that was that was weak that was not my best work but you know what i'm rolling with it i don't care big sink in that thing by the way weirdly though small medicine cabinet but i how many manufacturers have not yet mastered the ability to put a a, a hand towel hook or loop or whatever not directly down next to the sink so that the towel sits there and becomes an organic mold factory. Obviously, Jayco cracked the code. It can't be that hard. I mean, I'm, I'm not an interior decorator or anything, but it, it just seems like something that shouldn't be this difficult. The RV's six and a half foot tall. I'm a little over six foot myself. But you do have to step up into the, uh, the tub, shower, shove thing, basically, for uh, plumbing code. So that does mean that my head will be up in that bubble, just to give you a size reference. And while we're doing that, looking at the space around the toilet, I was very happy with this. I, I think that you could be a person of larger stature, and I think that you could still uh, fit in there very, very nicely. Now, if you look at that at a glance, you're like, oh my gosh, that is a massive chunk of storage. And it's good. But it's not like as deep as the shower because part of that is going to be used uh, over in the bedroom, actually, as a bonus closet. You might have noticed their little floor plan in a flash. And then back here, they got a little, I'm going to call it the eight ball in the corner pocket kind of storage over there. Or being white like that, that might be the cue ball in the corner pocket. Now, quick note on uh, decors. As I mentioned earlier, we're looking at the farmhouse decor here in the kitchen today. But you can change that. The darker stuff you saw in the living room, that never changes. The bedroom never changes. The farmhouse bathroom never changes. So if you go with the vintage decor, you'll actually end up with three wood tones in the RV. Some people really like that though. Uh, like I know that I've never lived in a house where the bathroom decor exactly matched the kitchen in the living room. Maybe that's maybe that jellies your jam. I don't know. There's also this big window over here uh, in the hallway leading up to the bedroom and bathroom from the kitchen. I like that Jayco does make theirs open for airflow. Not every manufacturer does. 
There's also a nice little privacy piece of trim right here. And your sliding pocket door actually has a U-latch so that you can effectively lock your bedroom door, which most sliding bedroom doors, especially in travel trailers, do not. And that's kind of the funny thing with uh, J Feather. They just crush all of these amazing extra little details. But then they give us a camp queen bed. And it just, it looks like there should still be room for a true queen in there. And other manufacturers have given us 80 inch long beds. If I could change one thing on this, that would be the one that I would always go with. Now, some people get freaked out about the door right there in the bedroom. Remember, you can deadbolt that. So you have the choice of sleeping alone or sleeping with friends. Uh, no, that didn't. Um, well, I mean, I don't know your your life and your persuasion. Maybe, maybe that works for you. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to get fired if I keep this up. Moving on real quick here. It's probably already too late for me. Over here on the side stands, you see household and USB outlets, and then you see a switch. Well, you notice how there's no light behind that headboard hanging tower. But over there in that power pocket, you do see a Labatt blue light. Well, zooming in on that, that's an interesting thing they do right there where... Um, the you have your choice like with individual reading lights effectively on either side of the bed not reading lights that that was the wrong phrase but just little i don't know pocket lights whatever you want to call it you can turn the light on in the power pocket i don't know why i felt the name to try to apply uh, a descriptor to it but uh anyway that's my my brain just flat melted and i and i and i and i quit and i quit um and i'm back okay so you see how you've got that extra closet space over there but you notice how there are shelves in it you could peel those shelves out the hanging wardrobe towers on each side of the bed also have little removable shelves so some people like to bring hanging clothing some people don't Jay Feather is built from the factory to accommodate both sets of people. Now, remember I said in the bedroom and in the bathroom, uh, every room has its own little vent fan. But again, in the bedroom and the bathroom, they're the small fans. Um, yeah, okay, I think we got the living room. Sorry, my brain once again just went pause and moving on. Now, when we close the slide out there, suddenly the travel access gets a little bit interesting. This has what I call two-stage travel access where you can get to the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, all the critical kind of stuff for traveling stops without ever touching the slide out. But it does require the use of two doors and thankfully with the magic of this here bedroom door, if I do the Michael Jackson hee hee moonwalk backwards out of this thing, you see that up front we have what I call nap and crap accessibility. Whereas in the back, well that's gonna be snacktastic. Now, I also thought while I was doing this, I'd go ahead and take a second to open the awning not that you're going to probably need the awning for a quick travel stop, but it was there, so why not? Now you get to see it. Uh, if we pop in the back door here, one thing I want to mention, you should not really be actively sitting in and using that slide uh, when it's retracted like that. So if you want to make a travel stop, you want to sit down to eat, you really should open the slide or you should find somewhere else to do that. So kind of keep those little factoids in mind there. You're snack-tastic in the back, however. Now, as I back up, one thing to mention, which naturally I forgot to turn off, you do have a full-length LED awning uh, light along the base of that thing. And just as long as we're kind of doing this whole roam around adventure, let's give you a look at this back corner here so you can sort of see a little bit of slide out before and after sort of action. And there we have it. All the windows nicely tinted, uh, helps keep the nosy neighbors and the sunshine out. And if the topic of towing starts coming up, the weight on this, well, I think that certainly reads as very uh, towable by late model tow package pickups, half tons as it were. But uh, the length of this RV might be the area where that starts to become a little bit of a question because this is slightly longer than some of the other people that build a layout like this. You might be going, well, why? Where did they add the extra length? And the answer is basically the bathroom. By going with a walk around bathroom instead of a walk through bathroom, they have extended the RV. A lot of people don't realize that's the case. A walk through bathroom is a way to make the RV shorter while still giving you a very large feeling bathroom. It's an awesome feature, but there's also some people that go, uh, yeah, my wife is not gonna walk through the cloud of whatever I happen to leave there every morning, fella. Uh, I need a different option. Okay, well, this is what, this is what you can do. Um, the awning on this, again, it doesn't cover the uh, bedroom door, but it's huge. 
That is something that Jay Feather has become very good about. They put monstrously sized awnings on this thing. And uh, this RV does have Asdell composite paneling used on the inside and outside layers of the lamb witch, the laminated sandwich of the wall. A little point of clarity, I saw somebody in a forum recently saying, um, wait a minute, I found out that my RV doesn't have Asdell siding. Asdell's not siding, Asdell is not skin. Asdell is what goes below the skin on the outside and below the wallpaper on the inside. It is a wood panel substitute. You still have a fiberglass exterior. There are still glues involved. Asdell itself is waterproof. Asdell does not make the wall waterproof. It doesn't make the RV waterproof. There have been some, uh, I'm gonna give people the benefit of the doubt and say accidental over promises and under deliveries uh, related to Asdell that hopefully that might clarify and help for a few people. Now they revised their front pass-through compartment recently here and uh, basically they just opened it up and made it extra wide. The baggage doors didn't get bigger. The storage inside them actually is now full height. Now look at that marker light down there. You see a little black thing hanging off of it right there? Black thing. <laughs> I don't know why I stressed it like that. But that is a, uh, a side view camera mount. This is all prepped and ready for a full observation suite. This also has their J Smart lighting package where if you flip on that right hand turn signal, that marker light's gonna blink. Now, the, uh, the camera and the light have their own separate power on, so you're not gonna cause the camera to go blink, 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 blink. But, yeah, and yes, it will sound exactly like that. <laughs> oh, what other good stuff do we have here? I mentioned the two plus three year warranty that no one's doing. I don't know if you spotted this now does have a tankless on-demand water heater. Up on the roof, there's a roof solar prep plug, and the one that we're looking at today has no solar actually applied to it. But what's cool, Jayco, they still are just tongue mounting that little uh, portable side mount solar prep plug. You know, they're not burying it inside someplace that's hard to reach. It's simple, but it's just nice that it's easily readily accessible. Couple other little things here, and then we'll wrap ourselves up like a mummy. They've updated the stabilizer jacks, these new quick drop stabilizers. Basically, they have an additional jack leg uh, strong arm built into them that will, uh, you can visibly see how much additional stabilization you're getting from them. The underbelly is enclosed. It is forced air heated. That does not magically make an RV, quote, four seasons. There is so much. I, I, I have a feeling I'm gonna spend the rest of my career fighting against this absolutely false four seasons promise that is out there. There, there are areas of this country that no RV is designed to be able to withstand. But basically, unless the snowflakes are flying, this one's gonna be okay. If it dips below freezing tonight and it comes back tomorrow, this RV should be okay. So I've done my best to try to let you know uh, what she does well and maybe some areas that it, 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 it doesn't excel. And I asked you earlier, who do you think does it better? Jayco, Cougar, or Imagine? And again, if you're not familiar with those other guys, I'll leave you links in the description where you can check those. Also, you can check our website to see where we have one of these parked and what we're asking at a given store, keeping in mind, it might be different from what we're looking at here today. It might have different options, packages, shipping costs. It could be thousands of dollars different as a result, depending on where you find it and how it's built. So our website always has pricing local and, uh, and specific to each individual unit at each individual dealership. Whether you're curious or whether you're serious, you don't have to give us your grandmother's social security number, maid name, those wacky digits on the back of your credit card. Just uh, get a price tag on one of these things. It'll be all right there for you. So when you're ready, we're ready. I'd love to hear from you. So take care. Stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.